Hey. Yeah. Huh. Indoors today. It's a little chilly out. And I recently had an incredibly painful procedure. Not physically painful that I was conscious of, but traumatizingly painful. In that uh, they stuck a camera down this end, and then they stuck another camera up the other end, and it was it was all very, very unpleasant. And it's uh, <clears throat> done in order to search for cancer. And that's cancer is one of the problems that we humans have because we are multicellular eukaryotes. And eukaryotes are a domain that includes plants, animals, and fungi. Guess which one we are? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we stink enough to be fungi sometimes, and some of us are definitely vegetative, but we are definitely part of the animal kingdom. Yeah. And we are eukarya. You, me, Coco the gorilla, your houseplant, and the plate of mushrooms that you're about to fry up and eat are all part of the eukarya. In fact, we may be closer related to the mushrooms than we are to the houseplants. That's an interesting possibility. Yeah. We're not sure, but we think we might be. And that's because we have evidence that kind of suggests it. But this comes back to an interesting problem. The reason that we humans need to get these uncomfortable medical procedures done is because of multicellularity. The fact that we have bodies comprised of multiple cells with a division of labor between the cells. And this evolved. <clears throat> Not, as some people have suggested, by a single cell grabbing another cell, and then grabbing another cell, and then grabbing another cell, but rather because of a mat of cells, a colony of hundreds of thousands of cells, possibly millions of cells, evolving a division of labor. That's how multicellularity works, how bodies work. The division of labor. And that division of labor is an evolutionary tactic that has worked wonderfully. It has allowed animals and plants and fungi to keep bacteria from taking over the earth. At least, that's what we tell ourselves. It, it's a conceit among multicellular organisms. You can occasionally hear the corn plants cackling among themselves. <laughs> we showed those bacteria, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the potatoes. The potatoes are notoriously vain about this. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. And the radishes. I think I elected a radish once. Definitely voted for one. Yeah. In any case, <clears throat> multicellularity, an evolved characteristic that works, and the reason that it works very simply is that it involves a division of labor. So that certain cells are doing certain things and other cells are doing other things and all the cells are working together for the common good. They're helping each other. It's a symbiotic relationship. And once you have multiple cells in a symbiotic relationship helping each other, you have a body, you have multicellularity, you have a functioning animal that can become mobile on its own. You have a functioning plant that can reach for the sun. You have a functioning fungi that can take over an entire forest ecosystem. Multicellularity is all about symbiosis. It's all about working together. It's all about cooperation and teamwork. This is what makes multicellularity such a success story. The fact that it works. It works. And we are... Okay, we are not the best evidence, but... Potato plants, cabbages, mushrooms, those beautiful big fungi that grow on the north side of trees in the forest. Um, oak trees, horses, blue whales, 
crocodiles. They are evidence of the power of symbiotic cooperation within an organism. We humans are kind of fucking things up badly, aren't we? Yeah, we are. In any case, multicellularity emerged from symbiosis, from teamwork, from multiple cells having a division of labor between them so that you could have every cell doing its own thing together cooperatively. And that is the secret of the evolution of multicellularity. The cooperative team effort. And it works. It works. Now if we could just get humans to accept this fact. 